Well, thank you for the opportunity to present this analysis looking at changes in bladder health over time um, using longitudinal data in the Boston Area Community Health Survey. So I have nothing to disclose. So just as a little background, um, relatively little research to date has focused on lower urinary tract symptom prevention and bladder health promotion in women. So to begin to address this gap, uh, the consortium that I'm a part of, the Prevention of Lower Urinary Tract Symptom Research Consortium, developed a new working research bladder health definition that um, emphasized that bladder health is not merely the absence of LUTs, but is really a complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being related to bladder function that permits daily activities and allows optimal well-being, such as travel, exercise, social activities, and so on. And this was largely modeled on the World Health uh, Organization definition of health. So to begin to quantify the distribution of this relatively new concept, we previously analyzed data from the baseline interview of the Boston Area Community Health Survey, and I actually presented those data last year at the ICS meeting. And we chose to analyze data from the box survey because it collected information on a large number of uh, LUTs, but also more unique, it collected data on interference from urinary experiences with several activities of daily living, and it did so in women um, irrespective of whether they endorse LUTs or not. So we use those data to begin to explore the possible spectrum of bladder health by cross-tabulating uh, LUTs with interference. And what we found, well, that doesn't work, okay, is that one in five women um, might be considered to have optimal bladder health, so no LUTs or no interference. About 60%, so the light purple to darker purple, might be considered to have intermediate bladder health, so some frequency of LUTs or interference. And the remaining 20% uh, might con be considered to have worse or poor health, so LUTs all the time or interference all the time. And this suggested that there was um, a spectrum of this uh, new concept. For the current analysis, what we did is we used data from the baseline uh, interview as well as the follow-up interview that was uh, conducted five years later to look at changes in bladder health over time. So if you look at the top of the table, you'll see the same distribution that I presented on the previous slide going from optimal bladder health through to uh, poor bladder health. Uh, and then we did the same thing uh, at the follow-up interv interview, and you'll see the cross-tabulation here. And what we found was there was actually quite a bit of variability in bladder health over time. So only about 40% of women remained in uh, the same category. So that's the white diagonal. Uh, approximately 30% actually improved in bladder health over time, and the remaining approximately 30% uh, worsened. And then we also took a look to see whether baseline bladder health category predicted where you would be five years later. And we found that indeed uh, being in a worse bladder health category at baseline predicted being in a worse uh, bladder health category five years later, irrespective of how we modeled that, um, just higher category or being in the highest category. So in conclusion, we found that bladder health was highly variable over time with the potential for improvement, maintenance, and worsening in almost all baseline categories of LUTs and interference. And we actually found this to be quite encouraging because it supports the potential for secondary prevention of LUTs and interference, so um, preventing the worsening or even improving in bladder health. So some future directions will be to look at factors that were related to uh, worsening and improvement. And I didn't go into detail about this, but we, um, these findings were independent of treatment. We also found that women with higher initial frequencies of LUTs or interference were more likely to have higher frequencies five years later. And we also thought that this supported the potential for both primary and secondary <coughs> prevention, given that as soon as it appears as though you have mild LUTs or interference, you are at greater risk for um, maintaining those or progressing. So it seemed better not to develop LUTs in the first place. And so finally, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the box survey team who uh, collected these data and the PLUS Research Consortium for funding this study. Thank you. Thank you. And the floor is now open for questions.
Oh, I'm not sure if you said, but uh, would you be looking at sort of treatment or do you have any data on if they had received any treatment during the five-year period? Right, yeah. So we did have um, a little bit of data on treatments or whether they were taking medications, whether they'd on, undergone surgery and so on. But the improvement that we saw was independent of that. So once, and we could model this in different ways, but once they had received therapies or surgery, we put them in the highest category and didn't allow for uh, improvement. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, I just wondered if I could ask a very quick question about the sort of uh, terminology and coming back to your original definition mm -hmm. taken from the World Health Organization that health is complete physical, psychological, social well-being and not just merely the absence of infirmity or disability infirmity. So I was just curious to know from a methodological point of view, if somebody says that their LUTs is impacting on their social life, their family life, their... Mm -hmm marital, whatever, um, is, is, is there a, a methodological difficulty in that that may be due to all sorts of other factors having to do with blood? Right, yeah. So, so with this analysis, so part of the PLUS consortium is to start to explore bladder health. And so as one of the studies that is being conducted, um, they've done focus groups, cognitive interviews, and so on to develop a scale that will be much more tailored to addressing that question. So, and then as part of another study within PLUS, just to get some preliminary data to begin to understand what distributions we might expect. Um, so we did this using existing data. Um, so it's not ideal. It was just the only study that we could find that would begin to um, inform bladder health. So yes, so they are planning on um, uh, developing items that would address that question that you just asked. Thank you. We've got time for one more quick question. Fantastic study. Um, thanks for presenting. Um, I was curious because I have long felt that those studying male LUTs have a lot to learn from female LUTs broadly. Um, and I know Bach has both men and women. Did you notice any sex differences or as you guys look or plan to? No. So we didn't look at that just because the uh, PLUS Research Consortium is focused on women, um, but the data are available on men, and that would be a very interesting companion study. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.